Hey there, YouTube. How you doing? It's your host, Roger Quinn, um, with a tutorial on how to make a basic CSS-based web page layout. Like this. There's an example. We're going to make something like that. We're going to start with something like that. That's actually made in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so this tutorial will be particularly useful to viscomi type people who like to do a graphic layout first and then like to create the code second. Okay, now just to clarify, we are not using the automatically generated nonsense code that Illustrator and Photoshop and things like that make. We're gonna be creating this thing from scratch using proper CSS stuff in Dreamweaver. But it is reasonable practice to create a rough layout first. I mean, that's in this case a very accurate layout, in fact, let's face it. Uh, and then to recreate that and use just the parts that we need when we get to Dreamweaver, okay? So that's the process. That's what we're gonna be making. Uh, it's not meant to be an indication of the best way to design things. There's probably some pretty stupid things I've done here. It's simply showing the process. Okay, so that you can then apply it to a much more clever layout. Okay, so just a little bit first of all about the approach taken here in Illustrator. I won't go into detail about using Illustrator because that's not what this tutorial's about. I will, however, just explain that the document size I've worked with is 1024 by 768. And I've got a couple of guides here. This first one there is an 800 by 600 space. The second one is a 640 by 480 space. I've got a center guide down the middle there as well. They're simply just there to allow me to see relatively where my content is sitting compared to some common browser sizes. And yes, I know, I know you're out there saying, but browsers are much bigger than that. I know, but think of this. Not everyone has, you know, computer monitors that are several kilometers wide, like you do. And also, what about things like, oh, I don't know, the so-called iPad and smartphones? They're pretty small. So it's actually not always a good idea to make massively wide content, okay? So I'm still sticking with this fairly traditional sort of mode of um, an 800 by 600 style space, which is my first guide there. And even the 640 by 480 then will allow me to see that most of my key stuff will fit in there. That's why I'm doing that, because it's kind of good practice. Radio and the second component here that I've uh, used in Illustrator that's relatively important for this type of work is I've used the slice tool. Okay, the slice tool is this peculiar looking knife thing that really doesn't do anything useful unless you're making web stuff. Okay, you'll find the same tool in Photoshop because you can do this whole process in Photoshop as well. Um, and it's designed to, I'll show you here, just to make boxy type um, slices. And that's what all these red little numbered areas are. And I've basically done that around any area that I want to eventually export out as a graphic that I'm going to use in my page. And you might be saying to yourself, why aren't you going to use all of it? Well, because most of this design I can actually make from scratch in Dreamweaver as CSS or HTML based stuff, which means it's much more efficient and certainly more editable later on, okay? So really the only stuff I actually need to export as a graphic is my big header graphic <coughs> and my three buttons. And the reason for that is because primarily, uh, obviously the header graphic is a graphically designed thing that really needs to work as a, as a picture and I can't recreate that with a default font. Um, and also, once again, the fonts here. I have used a specialist font, um, some fancy schmancy thing here, and I can't assume that people's browsers all around the place will have that same font. So in order to maintain that font, I need to export that out as a picture. And that's why I'm going to make those three things images. I'm also going to do a rollover effect, but I'll probably show that in a um, subsequent video. Because this one will go on a bit. And speaking of going on, let's move on to Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver. And there we go. And really what I want to concentrate here on is how to use uh, basic um, CSS uh, boxes, okay, div boxes to design your page. 
Um, this tutorial will assume you know uh, the real basics, certainly the basics of HTML and a little bit about the basics of CSS. I'm not going to go into great detail about explaining all the details. You should have a look at the W3C Schools tutorials. They're great. I reckon you should have a look and go through and read a little bit about CSS stuff, particularly the first few parts, because it explains a lot of background. Anyway, moving on. I've made a stock standard basic page here, just from the um, standard HTML uh, format in, in Dreamweaver. I've added nothing. It's just put in its basic stuff, and there is this stage nothing on the page. And here's where we shall start with our box models. Back in Illustrator, I took the liberty of drawing this layer. Okay. Now those numbered boxes, let me just hide my slices, okay, are indicating uh, the box the main box divisions I'm going to need to make in Dreamweaver. Okay, now I've done this for two reasons. One reason just for clarity's sake, and two, I can actually click on some of these and I can get some basic dimensions that I'm going to need when I get to Dreamweaver to work out what box sizes I need to work with. So the first box, number one, is my main container box. It's representing basically all of my page. So the background yellow color, the width of it, etc. The second area here is my header area. Okay, so this box here, I'll just zoom up a bit to that. The third area is my navigator bar, okay, which is that long sort of rectangular box going across there. The fourth div box I'll need to make is the one that's containing my main content. And inside that particular box are two others, five and six. One's going to be a left content, which is my sub-navigation, -nav -sub and one's my main content, which is number six here, which is where my text will be. And then finally at the bottom is my footer. Now, I didn't draw that actually in uh, Illustrator because I just planned I would be doing that in Dreamweaver, and that's basically what it looks like there. Okay, just a little footer area down the bottom of the page. I've quite deliberately put a border around this in Dreamweaver just so that you can see where that is. Okay, you don't have to do that, but I just did that again for clarity's sake. So those box divisions are what I'm about to go off and start making. So the first thing I'm going to make is this number one main container. Okay, so off to Dreamweaver to do that. Rightio. And this process is basically all about creating div tags. Okay, CSS divs, which stands for division. They are roughly comparable to table, or table cells more particularly, but they're a whole lot more flexible. And using the CSS or uh, Cascading Style Sheets uh, method, uh, in fact, very flexible in uh, order to very much control exactly where you want your layout uh, items and elements and things to be. A whole lot harder to do with tables, and there's a whole lots of reasons why tables are really not favoured that much anymore uh, for uh, laying out pages. So let's get started. So I shall start by inserting my first div. Okay. I'm not going to go into detail about the differences between classes and IDs. You should go and read about that. Okay. Suffice to say, you can use either. I'm going to recommend you use IDs. If you're following this tutorial and you know nothing about it, just use IDs. IDs are just going to be describing the type of divs that we're putting in. I'm going to call this first one, because you need to give it a name, container. Some people call it wrapper. Some people call it big box. It doesn't matter. You could call it Uncle Joe. It really doesn't matter. Actually, it does matter because you should use logical names. So container, I know, means it's going to contain all my stuff. Okay, so ID container. And it makes a box. And if we just view that in design mode and I click on it, we can see where that's sitting. However, if I were to view that in a browser, we see nothing other than the little bit of junk code that it puts in there to say that what it's containing. Okay, Dreamweaver puts that in automatically so you can just see where it is. So nothing's actually visible because when you're using this method of creating divs, okay, you need to then create a corresponding style rule to tell that div how it needs to uh, be visible. So that's really all it is. It's a two-part process. This seems to be where people get a little confused using this method uh, because they insert the div tag and sometimes confuse that with actually making the rule. Now they are two different things, so it's always step one, insert div tag, step two, make the rule for it, and that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so down in the CSS styles, 
I'm going to make the rule for the container that I just made. Radio. Now Dreamweaver is smart enough to know that at the moment the only thing sitting on my page is a thing called container. And so, and it knows that I chose that to be an ID and not a class, a tag, or a compound. I'll actually endeavor to explain a little bit about them later on. So it knows it's an ID. It's got a hashtag in front automatically because that's what defines it as an ID. Okay, it's very critical that be there and it's using exactly the same name. If I was putting that in from scratch, I would need to be very careful, container, to call that exactly the same name. No uppercase, because I didn't use uppercase, don't use spaces, things like that, and I've got a hash in front of it, so it knows that this new CSS rule called container will apply to the thing called container. Okay, as simple as that. For the moment, we're going to include all these just in the document itself. We won't worry about making a separate style sheet just yet. Okay. So I've hit OK and it brings me up now all the actual criteria that I can define in that rule. Now in this particular example for my container, I'm only going to just set a size on this. Now the size we used back in Illustrator for the whole page was 1024, so I'm going to match that. I actually don't need to put in a height because my content eventually will create the, uh, the height, that will force the height, but for the moment, just so I can see what I'm doing on the page, I am going to put in a height and I'll take this out later because it won't be needed. And then finally, the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to uh, put in a background color to this box. Okay, so I'm just jumping between these tabs over here. You can see there's, what have we got, eight of them. Um, they control different things that you can style. Um, you'll find you're mainly going to be using the box tab. Okay, that's where you do a whole lot of stuff. Possibly a fair bit in type and, and some in background. Okay, some of these other ones you may not use much. It all depends on the design you're doing. Anyway, back to our background color. Uh, you can choose from the colors that are visible there, or in my case, I'm going to type in, oh, I don't know, maybe randomly FFCC33. And lo and behold, it's the same yellow I'm using in Illustrator. Well, that's because back in Illustrator, I did pay attention to the color I chose. And if I click on the palette, uh, the yellow that I've used in Illustrator, it actually does tell me the hex code, okay, FFCC33. So this actually was obviously very deliberate so that I can make sure that the colors I work with in Dreamweaver are identical to what I'm going to be exporting in when I bring in some of these graphics. Okay, and there we have it. So let's have a quick look at that, all right. Um, I'll save it, save my page. Always a good idea to save that early in the piece, and I shall call this CSS. No, double two. Give it a name. Might even look at it in a browser. How about that? There's our box. Trouble is, it's doing one thing that annoys me. I really want that to center. Okay, and it's sitting off to the left. All right, so I'm going to fix that now. Oh, that's the previous page. I'll get rid of that. Okay. So back in Dreamweaver, if I go and modify the rule that I made. Okay, so I go to CSS styles, there's the container rule that I made. Double click it, go back to the box tab. And here's a very handy thing that you'll probably find you use a fair bit when you're trying to center div boxes. Just use the margin uh, settings, turn off same for all, and put on auto right and auto left. Okay, and to explain what that's doing, when I select that now, you can see it's actually got this blue sort of faded stuff at the side. That's just some graphic feedback that Dreamweaver shows you to tell you what it's doing. And it's basically just going to calculate an automatic amount of margin space on the left and right hand side. So that, if we view in a browser, as you stretch your browser size around, it will automatically center itself. Okay, so that's a pretty common thing that um, people often want to do so that the content does center. Um, and that's an easy way of doing it using the margin settings. Okay. All right, uh, we might end that for part one now, and I'll come back into a second video so that the videos don't go on for too long um, to show you how to complete the rest of the site and how to export some of those things out of Illustrator to go into your content. Okay, I'll see you again shortly in part two.